anything. I can say that this cat was rare, but I thought, man, forget it. Yo, homes the Bel Air. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai Jam. We are locked in. This is the recap for Bel Air episode three. Now, they dropped all three of these episodes on us, and I was like, man, it's going to be a long weekend. But we had the Thursday recap. We had the Friday recap. Hopefully, you tuned in for that live last night. It was a good one. And of course, we got episode three today. But before we jump into this and we break down episode three, if you like Bel Air content, after show discussions, potential breakdowns and theories, then hit your subscribe button. Turn on your notification bell. Hit that like button. We're on that road to 50,000 subscribers. And Bel Air is back. And let me tell you, I appreciate it. Now, I'm hoping that they picking it up when it goes into episode four, because right now it's just all build up. But let's go ahead and jump into it because it's still a great series so far. And it looks like they're keeping up with what they did in season one and season two. So this is the recap for Bel Air, episode three of season three. Carlton and Will are working their butts off because they told Q they have an idea for an app taking a former addict, a former basketball player, combining their stories and bringing their stories to light and helping out the community. So right now we see them on the couch and they're trying to come up with ideas. Initially, we're looking at them like, what the heck are they actually working on? Are they doing a website? Are they working on an app? But it turns out they're working on the logo for their company, Blacksys. They end up coming up with the logo, Blacksys, and instead of having the A, they use the crown. Now, this crown is also used in the Bel Air title for the logo of the actual show. So that's pretty cool how they did that. This is Bel Air. No one's allowed to sit around. We all got to get up and get to it. We need to seize the day. That opportunity is a waste if you don't get up and do anything. Now, Aunt Viv has brought in these flowers that Sharif has gave to her. Now, Uncle Phil sees him. He's like, who are these from? She's like, oh, the chef did that. When Uncle Phil reads it, he's saying, well, wait, why is it only addressed to you when I'm the guy that was paying for this whole thing? Now, I'm Vimp kind of downplays and says, oh, if you want me to get him to send you something, I can, darling. <laughs> but Uncle Phil's like, nah, I can see what's going on here, just like you and I can. Will and Carlton pull up on Jazz to show him the new design. Now, this shirt is just a prototype. This isn't a real deal, so you'll get better stitching, better quality of cotton. But while they're here, there's a woman by the name of Yolanda. She pulls up and she's running for city council. Her and Jazz, they have a history dating back to when they were in school. Now, she's trying to save the community, and she's saying, no, Jazz, you're a pillar of the community because Charlie's Vinyl has been around, and a lot of black-owned businesses are going out of business because they can't afford to stay in this area. Now, we know that Jazz is behind on his taxes, so now he's going to go to a car show. And Will and Carlton, they're saying, well, let us come down there, let us network, and try to raise some money, and we'll give proceeds to Charlie's Vinyl because we're supporting the black community. Lisa's out here trying to achieve her lifetime goals and that's winning nationals and swimming. So she has to get up early in the morning. She's doing three or four swimming lessons and practices throughout the day on top of being a lifeguard, trying to juggle her relationship with Will. But her coach is telling her, listen, if you want this, whatever your schedule is looking like now for the summer, you need to go ahead and put a halt to it because you need to be in this pool. Your number one priority is putting in laps. Practice makes perfection. Aunt Viv is really out here working her butt off. We haven't given her enough credit on how she took that promotion and ran with stride. Now, she has her two girls out and she's talking to them. And she surprises Hillary with an announcement that the most exclusive Italian restaurant in L.A. that's booked for a year. Her and Uncle Phil pull some strings and it's reserved for her and LaMarcus for their marriage. She's like, well, OK, so she's kind of downplaying it. And that's because we know she feels a certain type of way about jazz and her kissing jazz. But then she changes the subject and she looks at Viv's phone and someone's just blowing her up, blowing her up. So what Hillary does is says this is a stalker. She goes ahead and blocks whoever this stalker is. So I'm Viv doesn't have to worry about that because she doesn't know how to work this new social media. Aunt Viv has been living in her own world since she went to San Diego without letting anybody know. Now, she's been helping Lisa out because she told Lisa's mother when she was sick that she would look out for. Her. And she's also been looking out for Jackie. Remember, Jackie just came over and she's getting a letter of recommendation to Juilliard from none other than Viv. Now, Aunt Viv, not only did she hook Lisa up, she got Jackie a job at the 
country club. She got Will and Carlton a job at the country club. So now Will is messing with Lisa, but he's also messing with Jackie. And these two are going at it. Lisa's talking about getting in line. They're not going to adopt you. I'm the goddaughter. Then you hear Jackie say, well, you was here first. Then Lisa says, well, I'm still here. And Aunt Vib is like, "Uh uh-oh, what did I get myself into? Up in Uncle Phil's office, Jeffrey does show up. And he's talking to Phil and telling him, you might need to expand the Philip Banks and Associates law firm. Because remember, he partnered up with Erica. And the reason Jeffrey is saying this is because he wants him to be able to stand alone in case anything was to ever happen with Erica. Now, Uncle Phil is saying, I've already announced that I'm going to be partnering with Erica. But Jeffrey is saying, listen, Philip Banks and Associates would do so much better if you started getting your own clients. Now, this does have Phil thinking about it. Then in comes Frederick because he's been working up here in the mailroom and he's running around. This is so they can keep an eye on him. And he's getting all the jobs done. He's getting the mail. He's ordering supplies. He's making sure everyone has all the files they need. Now, Jeffrey, as I mentioned before, this is still new to him being around his son this often. Now it's time to put the plan in motion. We got to start promoting our idea and our business so we can get out here and make Quentin proud. So now everyone is thinking, all right, listen, me and Carlton, we went and talked to Jazz. We really want to help Jazz and Charlie's vinyl out. So what we're going to do is go to the car show. Who's up for it? Now, we know Lisa. She has to deal with her swimming practice and her summer schedule needs to be cut short because she also has practice in the morning. Now, Jackie, she knows all about this. We know Jackie knows the streets like the back of her hand. She's like, oh, yeah, let's all go. Let's all go down there. We promote. We hand out T-shirts. Well, we pre-order T-shirts. We got to make some money and we promote the app. Now, she says, let's do it like a big date. Carlton hears this and he looks at Will. He's like, man, you just like being on the wild side, don't you? Because now Jackie and Lisa, who we know hate each other, are about to be with Will out in public. Carlton and Will are pressing up their T-shirts for tomorrow's event with Jazz at the car show. Now, while they're doing this, Carlton's over here putting in all that work that he can. Will starts to talk about Frederick and what he's seen and noticed about Frederick. He said he seems a little sus. Because he heard Frederick on the phone talking about we can't tell Jeffrey. And he's like, man, you think we should tell Jeffrey about this? Carlton's saying, listen, man, that's his only son. You don't want to get in between none of that. So it would be best to keep Frederick's name out your mouth. Now, Uncle Phil walks by and he hears this. Now, Carlton, we know he just got out of rehab, so there's no doors on his <laughs> on his doorway. So Phil is saying, what's going on? And Carlton is like, uh, uh. And Will says, oh, we were talking about inviting Frederick to the car show tomorrow because, you know, he doesn't have anybody and he can hang with us. So Will wants to keep him close so they can watch him. Viv is outside going over a few things, just touching up before she goes back to work. Uncle Phil comes outside and he sees her and he wants to start talking to her. And he explains to her that, hey, listen, I know I've been working with Erica, but I think I'm going to start getting clients outside of her. Now, Viv is saying, well, didn't you just tell people at your opening ceremony that you were working directly with Erica? Why do you want to do that? Now, we know what Uncle Phil is trying to do. He's trying to separate himself away from Erica because she seems like the type to run her mouth. And plus, Jeffrey was right. It's time to expand. Put Phillips Banks and Associates on the map. So Aunt Vib is getting a little upset that he wants to venture out and do more for his own company. Ashley and Olivia, they've been very close. This is her friend. Now, we know that Ashley, she's been peeping what's going on behind the scenes with her family, and she's already explained that in episode one. Everything isn't what it seems, specifically dealing with Carlton and with her sister Hillary. So Olivia asks her, hey, do you want to talk about your sister? Ashley's like, nah. So Ashley, in the OG Fresh Prince, she was a singer. Well, this new age Ashley, she be spitting flows. I'm talking about one, two, three, and to the four. Ashley Banks is at the door. What you want to do? I'm like, okay, Ashley got some flows. Let's get it, Ash. Well, the whole crew shows up. Team Blacksis. We're here. We're here to promote the dream. We are the dream. We are the world. We are the future. We are the ones to make a better place. So keep on giving. They come in. They put their hands in. They throw the chant out. And let's go get some pre-sales for these T-shirts. The T-shirts is actually pretty dope, though, to be honest with you. I'd cop one. 
when you have friends like Ivy, you have to start looking at yourself in the mirror. Now, Ivy, she's walking with Hillary and she's seeing that Hillary isn't that excited about what's the next steps in getting married to LaMarcus, the football player. Now, Hillary comes clean and says that she and she says it out of her own mouth that she kissed Jazz and she needs to tell LaMarcus because Ashley, she knows about it and it's just not sitting right. Now, Ivy is saying you need to keep that quiet, take it to the grave, get married to LaMarcus. You love him, right? And Hillary's like, yeah, I do. But you can tell she really hesitant about it. She don't really mean it. She really won't jazz. Now, Jazz is out here and he's in the bind. That's because the taxes are due and it looks like he's behind a large chunk of change. Now, there's a gentleman out here looking at Jazz's car and he's like, how much do you want for it? Jazz is like, uh, maybe 30000 because the car, the Impala, oh, yeah, it's in mint condition. It's the original condition. So it's worth every penny. But Jazz, he really doesn't want to part ways with it quite yet. So the gentleman gives him his car and says, when you're ready to sell it, you know who to call. Now, we see Will and Carlton look like, wait, Jazz, you're, you're really about to try to sell your car? Man, what can we do to help? Because they're already trying to get proceeds to Charlie's Vinyl. Now, the crew is meeting up to see where they're at. We need to get us a little tally. Lisa, she said, I sold six. Six t-shirts. Jackie says, I pre-sold 32 of them. They like, man, dang, 32. It reminded me of Willy Wonka when Charlie said he only had one. Okay, 100. No, just one ticket. So Lisa's getting out sold. But Lisa's just here helping out. Jackie's more of the people person she's promoting and she already knew half of these knuckleheads in the streets anyway. So Lisa feels a certain type of way about Jackie being this close to Will. Now Amira, she finally shows up and Amira pulled up in a Hellcat. I'm talking about very, very nice whip, very clean. Now her being a, a prior addict, I don't know if she should be driving that. But she's seen the whole interaction between Will, Lisa, and Jackie and she's saying, Jackie was a little disrespectful to you and your boyfriend. And Lisa says, well, we're not doing titles. We aren't together. But you can tell that she's a little bit hurt about this. And Carlton, he's like, let me just stand back. Lisa didn't want me. Let her deal with the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Will Smith himself. Uncle Phil is taking the advice from Jeffrey. Now, Jeffrey gave him information on Omar, the project developer within the city of L.A. And he has him a nice lot of land. And he's about to build a little cinema. He's going to have restaurants, boutiques. The only problem is he might need some representation. That's where Uncle Phil comes in. Now, he's talking about his cranes and his forklifts messing up. But he also tells Uncle Phil, I wasn't looking for help. And Uncle Phil said, you weren't looking for help until you need help. The only problem is with Omar, people are coming over and sabotaging all of his equipment because they don't want him to build any of this around here because that's just going to gentrify the area and raise the taxes, raise the cost of living. You start bringing in all that money. But him and Uncle Phil, they could do some work. And this is bigger than anyone that wants to protect their reputation. Now, you got to remember, Frederick showed up with them. Now, you look over at Frederick, and we know he's been working at Philip and Associates, but he hasn't been working there long enough to have cash in his hand. So we're looking at what is he doing? Well, it turns out Frederick is making some real money. I made a G in a day, but you made it in a sleazy way. And he tells Carlton and Will, the real money is at the nighttime. We're betting on cars. We're betting on races. So he got a pocket full of cash. And hey, he's ready to blow it fast because you know what comes with these races. A lot of hostility, a lot of pent up aggression and a lot of greed. At the museum where Aunt Bill works, there's a mural painted on the side of the wall of a black woman. It looks very, very good. The paint is still wet and the assistant is like, man, this wasn't here, Viv. I don't know who did it, but I'm going to get on to it. So later on that evening, when Aunt Viv gets back, they find out who the artist is. So when Aunt Viv starts searching for her, she can't find it. So she has her assistant go through her phone. And it turns out the person, the artist, who put that painting on the side of the wall, that's who Hillary blocked when they were at the restaurant. So now she's like, I want to get in touch with her. We got to figure out who she is because her artwork is beautiful. I'm talking perfection. 
So Aunt Viv is out here making some moves too. As the night progresses, we start to see Jazz really start getting in his feelings. He owes a lot in taxes. He's potentially about to lose his uncle's vinyl. And it's, it's tough on him. As he told Will and Carlton in episode two, I don't have a reset button. I don't have an Uncle Phil to fall back on. And Will saying, man, I know it sucks, man. And he's trying to be a good friend to him. We got to give Will credit for this. And this is what Carlton was bigging him up on. But Jazz is hearing it. And he's like, man, reality's kicking in. I'm probably going to have to part ways with my car. Just give me a minute, Will. Just let me sit in here with my car for a little bit. Because as a man, you don't have time to sit around and cry and mope. You got to make moves. And if that means selling your prized possession to get back on your feet, getting back on your feet is better than any material item that you can have. All right. Will devises a plan because Will is going to be Will no matter what. Where there's a Will, there's a Will Smith. And he goes to Alonzo and says, listen, what we want to do is race you. We want to race you. We want to race you. Unless you're scared. Yeah, I said we want to race you. So what they're going to do is put up Jazz's car, and if Jazz wins, he gets $30,000 plus $5,000 on top of it. Now, that doesn't sound like a fair deal for Alonzo because Alonzo's only getting a $30,000 car, but if he loses, he has to put $30,000 plus $5,000 on top of it. No, 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 no. But Alonzo, he's confident, so he says, let's do it. Now, they need a car to race Alonzo. And remember I told you Amira pulled up? And that SRT Hellcat, yeah, she a speed demon. So she gives Carlton the keys. I was like, huh, you could drive the car. Now, if you know anything about them, them scats, you know what I mean? Them Hellcats, them Mopars, you know they going to get out. A lot of power. Now, Carlton, he drives it on the video games. And Will's like, well, wait, wait, wait. You race Phil one time. Let me drive. Carlton's like, ah, I thought I was going to drive. Plus, it's my girlfriend's car. If I'm Carlton, I'm driving regardless. But Will says, I'm driving, and they hop in the whip. All right, they hop in the whip. Go! Somehow, Jackie's the one that's telling them to go. Who shot are you on, Jackie? But Will double clutches. Boom, they get a, a slow start. Alonzo's off. Will's over here worried about the wrong things. Carlton's like, man, we behind. Well, once they get up here to the first turn on the bridge, because it's down and back, first one takes off, Carlton's like, all right, when we hit this, you cut the wheel to the left as hard as possible. I'm going to hit the handbrake. Will's like, what? Man, just turn the steering wheel. Carlton to handle the rest. They hit the handbrake. They pull that muff, the 180, and oh, now they in the lead. Now on the way back, Will, they got the lead. Alonzo's pulling up on the side of them. There's a truck in front of them. They got to figure out what they're going to do. Are you playing chicken with a Mack truck or are you slowing down? Well, Will ain't slowing down for nothing. Er, He hit the gas a little harder, but he has to go off road. Now he's on some shortcut. Carlton got to get on his GPS. They got to find a different route to get to the finish line. Alonzo's just cruising right now. Yeah, easy money. I'm about to take that 6-4 Impala. He already imagined what he's about to do with it. But Carlton's giving him a shortcut. Because one thing about Google Maps, it always gives you the quickest route, no matter what. You can go off course. Google Maps will get you there. They come out from that shortcut. They pull off. They go across the finish line. Everyone is happy. Jazz drops to his knees. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I don't know what I was going to do. Dude, he was about to lose the shop and the car all in one night. 203 piece. But they end up winning the race. Everyone comes over. They cheering. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Woo. Woo. Alonzo mad as hell. Damn, man. It feels like the first thing we've seen in the original Fast and Furious. After the race, everyone is walking off. Good old time. Man, we won that race. Woo. Thank the Lord. We made it, y'all. We did it. Now, as everyone's walking off, Will and Lisa, Carlton and Amira, Jackie shows up. Hey, y'all trying to go down to, to Freddy's? They're like, man, it's closed. She's like, nah, I know the manager. My homie's the manager. We can go and eat. Now, this makes Lisa upset because remember, she has to get up in the morning. She's already been out too late. So she calls Jackie out. She said, the only thing you can do is shake your tail feather, sell some T-shirts to get Will's attention. You're a B. I said, oh, Lord. And then she storms off. So I guess we ain't going to Fred's tonight. After the ladies leave, 
Well, they end up seeing Frederick in the middle of the street. Now, remember, Frederick was making some bets out here. Well, it looks like Frederick then took some money, allegedly, because this gentleman in the blue is trying to fight him. Now, Frederick, we know he can box. He can throw them hands. But he's like, man, you ain't going to do nothing. Y'all might as well fall back. Will and Carlton come over there. Will steps in front of them, and they get ready to get into it. People start shoving each other, and then out of nowhere, you hear, whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the police. And, of course, whenever you hear the police, no matter where you're from, where you're at, you hear the police you hit the streets running and everyone started to get low. Once Carlton, Will and Frederick get away, they go into a parking garage. They laying low. Everyone's out of breath. And they're looking at Frederick like, man, what the hell are you doing? He's like, man, don't worry about it, man. Them dudes weren't going to do nothing. And it turns out Frederick did take the money. But out of nowhere, Jeffrey pops up. So it appears that Jeffrey has been following them and just watching them all throughout the day. Now, when Jeffrey gets here, what does Frederick say? He says, oh, don't worry about it, Dad. If I didn't step in, Will and them could have been in a lot of trouble. But I basically got them out of it to make it seem like he's the good kid. Carlton and Will are looking at each other like, man, what? We saved you. But they don't say anything because they don't want Jeffrey to know what they've been getting into. The very next morning, we know Lisa had to get up. Practice is more important than anything. Well, Will shows up, too. He has a little grass shake for it. it looks disgusting but it's healthy and he tells her straight up listen i know what i want and what i want is you it ain't jackie so forget all of that i'm here for you i'm supporting you and i just want you to want me like i want you so she says okay will if that's the case let's go ahead and make it official and well there you go they make it official Hillary and Ivy are showing up to LaMarcus's practice because it's just been heavy on her shoulders. She needs to tell LaMarcus what exactly happened that night with Jazz. And Ivy's like, not before a practice, not before a scrimmage. If you ever played sports, you don't want that on your mind. First of all, as a man, you don't ever want to know that your girl is doing something with another guy. But before a practice, before work, Man, you'll be out there discombobulated, confused, thinking about the wrong thing. Blue 42, blue 42, your girl is cheating on you. You don't know what's going on out there. You can't stay focused. But coach calls him in, and Hilly doesn't get an opportunity to tell him about Jazz. Will and Carlton got to go call out Frederick. It's a lot going on in this episode, and let me tell you, Will, he's got to dig himself out of everything. So they go and talk to Frederick like, dude, do you know what you're doing? This ain't the UK. Over in the UK, you'll get stabbed before you get shot because they can't have guns. But Will is telling them these L.A. streets are a little bit different. And we might have to tell Jeffrey what you were doing that night because we saved you, not the other way around. But Frederick's like, man, you got to save me when it came to Jeffrey. So everybody's all over the place. But what Frederick says is, if you guys go tell Jeffrey what I was doing, then I'll tell him that you guys were street racing. If I got to tell it, then I'm going to tell it all. So he has a little bit of blackmail going on to Will and Carlton. Aunt Viv and Erica finally had that conversation that they needed to have. Erica came to L.A., said she didn't have any friends. Aunt Viv is like, well, if that's the case, then why would you come and talk to me? And now you're so distant. Well, the conversation they had, Erica ran her mouth about kissing Uncle Phil. Uncle Phil comes home and he has to talk to Viv about this. Now, he already told Erica it wouldn't be nothing. She doesn't need to know about this. But Erica, she had to tell Viv. It wasn't because she felt sorry for Viv. We know that she's just trying to one up on Viv because she still wants Uncle Phil. Now, Phil is saying he didn't tell her because he didn't want this relationship to be any more stressful. And all Viv heard was stressful. So the relationship, the marriage is stressful. And that's not what he was saying. He just didn't want to bring no stress. But here we are. Back to ground zero with these two. And after that practice, LaMarcus ended up taking a hit in the end zone. And after he walked off, everyone's looking like, okay, he's all right. He's up. Wait a minute. Why is he limping like that? He takes about 10 steps. They're like, man, is this a zombie? He drops down to his knees. He falls to the ground. The ambulance, get the medic. It looks like my dog just took a concussion. But at least he made the touchdown. Coach used to always tell us, catch the ball, pause, 
you're going to get hit anyway. So now Hills is feeling bad because she didn't get to tell him what she wanted to about jazz. All right, there you go. That's the recap for episode three of Bel Air. Let me know what you're thinking about the series so far. And what is Will going to do about Jackie and Lisa? And is Uncle Phil going to be able to recover from this Erica situation? Because it's a lot going on and it looks like relationships are the number one problem in Bel Air. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. I'm out.